So having looked at shortest path problems for weighted graphs, we now look at a different problem which is the minimum cost spanning tree. So minimum cost spanning tree is something that comes into play when we want to analyze a graph and see how to recover a connected part of it. So for example, you could have a district where roads have been damaged by a cyclone and you want to restore the roads and your first priority is to make sure that you can go from everywhere to everywhere. So you want to make sure that the roads that are restored connect all the vertices. So you could have some roads which are not restored, but you want to choose roads to restore which make sure that after you have restored these roads, every town in that district is reachable from every other town. Right? So which set of roads should you restore first? And similar situation could appear in telecom. So you have some fiber optic network or some other kind of network which serves a bunch of customers and now you may want to provide some kind of guarantee to the customers that their service will not get disrupted even if there is some kind of road digging along some of these roads. So these cables are all laid along the road. So what you do is you lay a second set of cables which is on the opposite side of the road for example so that you make sure that if one set is dug, the other set is not dug. Now, of course, you could duplicate all the cables on all the roads, but is there a smaller set of cables that you can duplicate so that if you lay these cables, still everybody will be connected even if the original cables get cut. So this is a problem that is called a spanning tree. So you want to take a graph which has a certain number of edges. They could be roads in the network or they could be these telecom fiber connections. And you want to retain a minimal set of edges so that the graph remains connected. Right? So a minimally connected graph is a tree. So a tree is something which on n vertices is n minus 1 edges. So if you add an edge to a tree, you get a loop. right? And if you remove an edge from a tree, you get a disconnected graph. So we want a tree which is a sort of smallest possible connected graph on n vertices. And we want it to cover all the vertices in the graph that we have. So it spans that graph. So it's called a spanning tree. Now in general, you could have more than one spanning tree. So here, for instance, the red graph that we have drawn is a spanning tree. It connects 0, 1, 3, 4, 2. So it leaves out these two edges. right? And still it connects everything. So this is one spanning tree. But we could also have a spanning tree with these four edges, 0, 3, 3, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4, which leaves out two different edges. So when we are doing some practical problem like the one we discussed about relaying roads or restoring or placing duplicate fiber optic cables, there is also a cost associated with either relaying that road or maintaining a cable of that point. Right? So it's interesting to look at this spanning tree problem in the context of a weighted graph. So we don't have just an underlying graph, we have a weighted graph and now we have a criterion to choose between the different spanning trees. So we said that we could have multiple spanning trees, but now we can say that one spanning tree is better than another spanning tree if it costs less. So this is a natural interpretation where for instance if I want to restore the roads as fast as possible and as cheaply as possible, I would like to restore a spanning tree of roads which costs the minimum and which takes le least time to do. Same way if I have to maintain redundant links for my customers from a point of view of a service provider, they want to spend as little as possible for this extra service that they are providing. Right? So we are looking at these different possible spanning trees and we are assessing their value based on their weight. And what is the weight? It is just the sum of the costs of all the edges that form that tree. Right? So just like we saw for a path, the weight of a path is the sum of the weights along a path. Here we have a tree. So these are all the edges that we need. Now what tree gives us the total cost which is minimum? And this is what we call a minimum cost spanning tree. So here for instance, we have this weighted graph and we construct one spanning tree, the red one. Right? Then this will have its weight which is 18 plus 70 plus 6 plus 20 which is 114. Okay? But this is as we saw not the only spanning tree. So we could also construct another spanning tree which has 10 plus 6 plus 20 plus 8 and we get a drastic reduction in the cost from 114 to 44. So our goal is now to give, given such a graph, to identify the minimum cost spanning tree. So it's useful to remind ourselves of some basic things about trees. So first of all, 
a tree as we said is the smallest connected graph that connection that you can draw on a graph. So, if you have n vertices then a tree on those n vertices will have exactly n minus 1 edges. Right? So, one way of thinking about this is that if you have a connected graph right, then everything is in one component. Now, a tree is connected and acyclic which means that between any two vertices there is no cycle. So, there is only one way to go from one vertex to another. So, if you take a graph like this a tree and you cut it at some point it must fall apart into two components right because if it does not fall apart into two components it means there is a way to go around. So, basically if I, I if I have this and if I cut this vertex here and I find that I can still go from here to here then originally there must have been a cycle right. So, therefore, if I delete an edge from a tree I will add from one component I will go to two components. Now, each of these is connected. Now, again they are they are also trees if I cut thing I will go one more time and I have n vertices originally. So, I have one component if I cut one vertex I have two components if I do this n minus 1 times I have n components, but n components means I have n isolated vertices no more edges right. So, I must have started with n minus 1 edges. So, this is one argument saying that if we delete n minus 1 edges we will come to singleton vertices. So, the original tree had only n minus 1 edges. Conversely, if I take a tree and add an edge right it must create a cycle for the same reason we said before because you could already go from anywhere to anywhere. Now, if you add an edge you are adding another way to go right. So, therefore, the new edge plus the old path. So, I have already a way to go from i to j and now I have added an edge directly from a to j together this must form a cycle right. So, adding an edge to a tree will form a cycle. So, the third property is that if I take any two elements any two vertices in a tree then there will be only one path between them and there will be exactly one because they are connected, but there will be only one because if there were two then you can see like this you can go two different ways then there must be some place where these paths diverge and join. So, there could be at i and j or some intermediate point. So, there must be a cycle somewhere in the graph right. So, if you had multiple paths between two two vertices you cannot be having a tree. So, any of these facts basically any two of these tell you that something is a tree. So, if it is connected and acyclic then it must be a tree. If it is connected and has n minus 1 edges it must be a tree. If it is acyclic and it has n minus 1 edges it must be a tree. So, all of these basically any two of these tell you that you have a tree and imply the third. So, why do we need this? Well, we will actually use these facts when we are building spanning trees. So, we will have two strategies to build spanning trees. So, one will basically start with a small edge and try to grow a tree by adding smaller edges. So, this will be similar to our shortest path kind of strategy where we try to add edges as, uh, as minimally as possible. And the other one will basically uh, try to create a small graph which is not a tree, but in between I may not have yet a tree. So, I might have components, but I will try to avoid cycles, but I will pick up since I know I want the smallest possible spanning tree, I will pick up the edges in ascending order of cost. And if I can add it to my tree, I will add it. If I cannot add it, I will throw it away right. So, the first algorithm is called Prim's algorithm and the second one is called Kruskal's algorithm and we will study both of them.